Hi, everyone. Welcome to the next episode of the Bay Street Capital Holdings podcast titled, How Do You Do It and Why Should I Care? This series aims to highlight women doing amazing work in various industries. So today we are so lucky to be joined by Jennifer Bowman, who is CFO at AE3 Partners and President and Board Chair at Vanguard Music and Performing Arts. Hi, Jennifer. Lovely to have you on the show. Hi, Layla. Thank you for having me. So um, let's start off with a quick introduction as to who you are and maybe an answer to the question of the whole podcast, which is how do you do it and why should I care? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Jennifer Bauman. I am the chief financial officer of an architectural firm called AE3 Partners based in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I'm also the president and board chair at Vanguard Music and Performing Arts. Um, a couple other things about me. I'm the daughter of immigrants. I'm the oldest of three, and I was actually the last person to finish college in my family. <laughs> um, and so my career path was very untraditional, um, very different. And um, I think that it was really, truly the way that it was meant to be for me. Awesome. Um, so I guess my first question to you is what inspired you to join this industry of both architecture and then also music and the performing arts? Were you musically you know, inclined as a child or was that very creative as a child as well? Yeah. So it's so funny because I actually hated math as a child and I ended up um, with a career that where I use math every day, all day. And it's, it's kind of interesting because, yes, I was musically inclined as a child. I started taking um, piano lessons at the age of eight. And so I think what's really interesting is um, I thought I was going to be, um, be a musician, actually, when I grew up, mm. but it didn't work out for me. And um, I think what's really interesting is that, you know, how they always say it and how studies show that math and music are so closely related and so closely correlated. And I think that's completely true. And I think that's how mm -hmm. it kind of um, translated over into my career. So, you know, the, my inspiration to join this industry was um, because I was looking for, since the musician route didn't work out for me, I was looking for something stable and I kind of fell into accounting and just kind of followed it from there because I really, really liked it. Awesome. So it seems like you kind of accidentally fell into accounting, but I'm curious as to what were the best resources that helped you along the way? Um, let's see. Best resources along the way were really the people in my life. I'm going to say um, it was my network and the people along the way who I was able to work with, look up to and see, you know, what kind of careers are available in accounting. Um, are, those are the resources really that helped me figure out what I was going to do and how I was going to get there and the way that I wanted to be. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, I definitely would second that your network and the people in your life are the people who you can learn the most from, not only those who are further ahead in their career, but also those who are slightly, you know, starting out because there's just so much you can learn. Absolutely. Your network is so important. And that's actually something I talk about with people all the time. I do um, try to mentor as many people as I can. And it's not even just people in my who are seeking careers in my industry, but anyone that's starting out in their career, anyone that's in college and even in high school, my number one biggest piece of advice is it doesn't matter where you're going to go with your career in your life or what what you're studying for your network, your network, your network is mm -hmm. the most important thing that follows you um, throughout your entire life. So I really, really emphasize that. Yeah, and it seems you spoke to a lot of people before entering your respective industry, but were there any lessons that you wish you would have known before starting your profession? You know, I, again, I wish I had known how strong networking would be. I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna be a pretty, like a broken record about it, but I wish I had known as a teenager and starting out in college and stuff about how important those relationships would be. And I, I was such a shy, I was a really shy kid. And so when you're shy, it's like the idea of networking and introducing yourself to people and meeting people is absolutely terrifying. And so I just didn't do it. And I wish that I had, you know, I had someone that had told me how important it is to um, to build your network and make friends. Even then you're never too young to do so. You all everybody has something to offer at any age. And um, even if you're 16, 17, 18, you can start networking. It's it's the people around you. It's the people you meet when you work. It's the people you meet when you go to the store. Um, there's always opportunities to do so. So, yeah. 
Oh, awesome. And uh, thinking across the span of your career, what would you say was your biggest failure and what did you learn from it? You know, I think that my biggest failure was how long it took me to overcome my shyness because I really believe um, it really held me back from a lot of opportunities. I, I think there were a lot of missed opportunities um, because of it. But because once I recognized and really understood that my shyness and, and was hindering me from the things that I wanted to do, the things that I really felt like inside that I could really do and be. Um, once I identified that and like researched and looked up things about how to overcome it, um, that was a really big changing point in my life. And actually with Vanguard Music and Performing Arts, I'm a product of the, um, of the program. And so I was in it for three years when I was 19, 20 and 21. Being in the, in the music program really helped me overcome that shyness um, because I became a leader in my section. And when you're a leader, you've got to, you can't, you cannot really, really be that shy of a person. Mm -hmm. And so being in Vanguard really helped me with my confidence and my shyness. And um, I definitely, so yeah, how long it took to overcome my shyness was um, a failure. However, I did get over it. And now you can't get me to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I wouldn't even count that as a failure because you thought it was a learning opportunity and you learned how to be confident and, you know, believe in yourself. So I'm really glad that, you know, the music could help you do that. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. And what advice then would you give to somebody who is wanting to pursue a career similar to yours? So again, network is your most mm -hmm. important, valuable asset. People, I think mistakenly, and, and, and it's because they teach you this in school, but you know, you think that, yes, of course, your technical skills and knowledge of the industry you want to go in, um, accounting, CFO, whatever, finance, whatever it is. Yes, of course, technical knowledge is very, very important, but your network and your people skills are actually your most completely your most valuable asset to your you and your career. So uh, for someone wanting to pursue a career in this, um, networking, make sure that your interpersonal skills are up there, practice them all the time. You never, you should never ever stop practicing them. Mm -hmm. um, learn how to get to know people and make conversations so that you can build relationships because that's how you, that's how really how you grow as a person mm -hmm. in your career. And um, another piece of advice I would give someone is uh, learn how to be a compelling communicator. Mm -hmm. You in, as a CFO, as an accountant, you actually have to you have to do a lot of speaking and you have to do a lot of writing and that's something I actually didn't know when I got into this and I was okay at both of them um, but I had to learn really fast about how to do written communication, write reports, write emails, um, how to talk to people in certain different settings, different situations um, and as I ramped up those skills, I feel like I just kind of hit this ceiling like broke through that ceiling and just really hit my stride. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really, again, not the technical, te necessarily the technical skills, but it was like being able to talk to people and communicate with people. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. And then finally, about your career, what is one common myth about your professional field that you would like to debunk? I, w I think there's a big myth out there about what a CFO should look like and what a CFO mm -hmm. should be. I think that there's this like people, if you ask somebody, there's a pretty standard look, vision, and behavior of a CFO. And I totally want to break the myth that there is only one way to be and only one type of CFO you can be. Um, I am the CFO of a small firm and I like it because I get to wear a lot of hats. I get to explore a lot of things. Um, and I get to, I get to be very agile. I get to make a lot of decisions um, on my own that give me a lot of empowerment and my bosses have completely allowed me to do so. So um, and as you can see, like, I'm just not, I, I'm not a typical, I don't look like or sound like a typical CFO. And then that was another thing. Once I understood, like, it's okay to be me. Mm -hmm. I do things my way with my style. I am a woman of color and I talk like a Valley girl and that is okay. <laughs> that's who I am. And once I embraced that, <laughs> um, everything just really fell into place. And I, again, I hit another kind of stride in my career and it's been, it's been fabulous. And it's, it's, it's where you hit a place of happiness when you accept who you are is your strength. And that's how you should be in your career and in your life. And that's, that's a great thing to do. Yes, I completely agree. And that is 
such an amazing way to put it that's such great advice I wish I would have known that earlier on in my life as well (laughs) yep (laughs) that's awesome so uh, more about you I'm really intrigued what have you read or listened to recently that's really um, inspired you so recently I listened to a podcast by a Brene Brown podcast yeah. Um, I'm always I'm always looking for articles, podcasts, things that I can read and consume quickly, th- especially they're about leadership and just kind of like life in general, especially um, about other women who are married, have children, career, mm-hmm. who do service work as, as well, mm-hmm. because it's a lot to juggle. But there was this one recently that I listened to that was Brene Brown. And I think the podcast itself was about leadership, but that's not the part that really stuck out to me. Um, She actually started discussing about how her and her husband figured out a way to manage their, each of their rising careers and raising their children and, you know, taking care of the family and stuff like that and juggling all of those things. And what I loved is like, they came up with something like a 50, 50, something about a 50, 50 agreement where if you've got a lot of stuff going on on your schedule that week, then you tell your spouse or your partner, you know what, this week I'm at a 20. So mm-hmm. I need you, you, you need to be at an 80. Can mm-hmm. you have the bandwidth to be in an 80? And then you kind of work it out that way. And it just, it totally, this light bulb went off in my head. And I'm just like, that is so simple and so genius because, mm-hmm. you know, we all love to quantify things. When we quantify things, we can understand it a lot easier. We love percentages. We love dollars and numbers. We love like scoring things. And so when you can put a number to your availability in your overall life with your partner, um, as you're trying to do all these things with your career and personal life and all, as well and, and self-care and all these things, um, I think that it's just like this, it seems like such a simple and elegant solution to managing your life together in partnership with your partner. So that was something that really inspired me to go, huh. And I, my husband and I can do that. Anyone can, I think anyone can do that. That's in a, in a relationship and trying to achieve all these things together as a team um, where you just, you're not always 50, 50 every single mm-hmm. day of your life, but sometimes you're an 80, 20 or a 70, 30. Um, and so that was really eye opening and inspiring to me that like, to hear another to hear this very successful woman who has these amazing perceptions about life and that that's how she manages her um, her life and her marriage and, and trying to juggle it all was really, really cool to hear. Mm, and yeah, I definitely would agree. Just that communication is so, so important, especially in an ever increasing digital world. You know, you need to remember to just talk to somebody about your problems or what you're going through. So, yeah. Absolutely agreed. Yep. And um, you mentioned this a little earlier about the power of your network, but I'm curious, um, who are three people in your life who've been the most influential to you? And sorry, I had to limit it to three. I'm sure you have. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to limit it to three. Um, I, I mean, I would definitely say in one of those categories, it would be the mentors that I have in my life, the ones I've had in the past, the ones that I have currently, um, and the ones that I hope to achieve, you know, or to, to make relationship that I don't even know about yet. And, um, and I think it's also important to note that some of these mentors that I have that I consider mentors don't even know that I consider them that my mentor because sometimes it's just like this relationship that you fall into and you it's someone that you can pick up the phone, you know that they're going to pick up and you can say, hey, what would you do about this? And that they'll just be able to answer. Like that's mm-hmm. such a wonderful thing to be able to do. And I have several people that I'm lucky enough that I can call upon. Um, so definitely... My mentors in my life are um, have been the most influential people to me directly. And as far as like people that I don't know, I would say like with celebrities or people that I look up to out there and that I follow, I absolutely love Michelle Obama and Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. I think that they are, I love that they are successful people but they're still very relatable. And Oprah has created her own, this empire, you know, back when nobody nobody had like no woman or woman of color or anything had ever done that kind of thing. So she's an absolute trailblazer and I love and respect um, what they both do. And then another person that was really influential to me um, is Lisa Ling, Mm -hmm. uh, the journalist and reporter, because as an Asian American uh, growing up, 
you didn't see a lot of uh, Asian faces, you know, Asian faces in media and on TV and in movies and shows. And then I, re I can totally remember when Lisa Ling became a regular contributor on the Oprah Winfrey show. Mm. And that's how her career, I think, really got started. And to be able to see this, you know, an, an Asian American woman reporting on all of these cool things that are happening in the world was so wonderful for a young Asian American girl like me who did who was not used to seeing that on TV um, to see her on TV. And she's from the Sacramento area too, which mm -hmm. I grew up in Sacramento area as well. So that was like, that was a really big, big deal for me growing up. Awesome. And then finally to sort of round off our conversation, what is one piece of advice that you wish you gave yourself at any point in your life? Uh, I, I wish, so a, a piece of advice I wish I gave myself is trust your instincts because your instincts have always, it, they will serve you well. If you have to convince yourself to go to make a decision that goes against your instincts, you're not, that's not the way to go. Don't listen, don't try to do that. Believe in what your gut reaction to things are because that will serve you well in your entire life. Awesome. And what a lovely piece of advice to end our a conversation on. So thank you once again, Jennifer, for taking the time to speak with me. I really appreciated our engaging conversation. Thank you. You too, Layla. Thank you. Bye-bye.